It's really difficult not to just be amazed by absolutely everything. Yeah, this place is absolutely nuts. I'm not sure what, what, what just happened, but it was absolutely incredible. <laughs> I hope they don't come over here. We're in. That was quite nerve-wracking, actually. It's like going through customs. This birthday is not doing me proud. We weren't expecting that. Sound of Istanbul. Welcome back to the channel. We're Janine and Liam Day, a married couple who are attempting to live and travel full time in our camper van, doing van life in the UK. But last week emotions ran high as Liam surprised me at the airport with an amazing trip to Turkey for my 40th birthday. I had no idea about it and whilst excited about it, I was a little nervous as I know nothing about the Turkish culture. Too late now as off we fly to Istanbul to start our Turkish adventures. So please subscribe to the channel and let's go explore Turkey. Good morning and welcome back to the channel. We are late for the gate. We are at the airport. We are going on some Turkish adventures. Have you watched that video before? You'll see that Janine has got the biggest surprise for her 40th birthday and we're just about to board the plane for it now. We'll explain more when we get on there. have just landed in Istanbul. Um, we're through passport control and we're heading outside. What we have to do is get some money because we haven't got any money at all. Um, and we need to try and figure out how we're gonna get to our accommodation. So we need money and a taxi. It's about, I think it's about 40 kilometers away from the airport, wow. which I wasn't, I didn't really, I didn't really get when I booked it. That's but far. taxi or bus or something, we'll get there. Yeah, we'll do it. But first stop, money. How many lira to pound? How much? Um, 200 is a tenner. Okay. So we are leaving the airport now. We've got some currency. Don't, still don't know how we're going to get into um, the actual main city. I think it's some sort of shuttle bus or taxi or something. It must be. It's called quite a distance. Um, and then we'll go and see what the accommodation's like that I've booked for tonight. Always a bit, uh, it should be interesting, because really I've got no idea. We left the main gates at the airport and decided to catch a government-run meter taxi as opposed to a non-official taxi, simply for safety reasons. Our hotel is situated in the Fatih area of Istanbul, which is one of the oldest districts and located within the walls of Constantinople. Having never been here before, we didn't realise how big it was. It's absolutely massive and took 45 minutes to drive to our hotel from the airport. We finally got dropped off at a small hotel called Miniature, right in the heart of town. I assume it does anyway. It says the Hotel Miniature. Oh, what's your name on there? Yeah, this is your room number. I will show you. Straight in. Perfect, thank you. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Cheers. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Have a nice day. See, See you. Bye. Th Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. So, <laughs> everyone in Istanbul knows my, it's my birthday. Oh, look at that. <laughs> that's amazing. Oh, that's so cute. Look at this balloon. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I've literally gone to town. I can't believe you've done that. <laughs> There's literally balloons everywhere. They're all over the floor. That's so funny. And what's on the bed? Happy birthday. In what? In rose petals. I think it's rose petals. Yeah. That's so cute. Aww. <laughs> what welcome to Istanbul, eh? I know. <laughs> They also left us a note and it's really cute. So we'll share with you our feelings at this special time of year. May your holiday be a delight filled with happiness and cheer. <laughs> How cute is that? Oh, that's lovely. Already I love this place. So I'm gonna give you a quick room tour because in about five minutes, me and Liam are just gonna <laughs> mess the place up as we do, so. First of all, we have a lovely mini bar, water and a kettle with coffees and stuff. A wardrobe with a safe and some robes in. Oh, nice. Feeling a bit fancy. And there's a snack fridge there. We have the window, which looks out onto a roof. <laughs> Not we'll the best view. <laughs> and we have a lovely bed decorated with rose petals. 
and some nice lamps. It's actually all aircon in here and it's really nice, a nice temperature. And here we have the bathroom and it's actually a really nice bathroom. It's a really nice bathroom. Big mirror, a big shower, toilet and lots of their products. That's the room tour. It's a very small room, but it's exactly what we need. We're in the heart of Istanbul, and I think this is a really nice hotel. Okay, cool. We're heading straight out because we're both feeling pretty hungry. We didn't get any food on the aeroplane. We have no idea if this place is good for vegans or not. I know Turkish Delight is vegan. Um, God, main, we're <laughs> mainly. So it might just be a dinner of turkish delight but we're gonna go out and see anyway we headed out the sun was starting to set so we wanted to get our bearings before the night draws in we walked through narrow roads and alleys and got our first taste of turkey istanbul was a culture shock and first impressions we love it we found a place to sit for a bite to eat listen <laughs> Sound of Istanbul. That's why we came here. That is why we, and the hummus. And the hummus. We've just checked the menu. So the price of a large beer is about £4.50 and the price of a small beer is about £3.50. We ordered a couple of beers with some nuts to start, then went on to some bread, hummus and a tomato dip, which was a bit like a mix between pesto and tapenade. It was all delicious. We sat back and ate our food and soaked up our first moments of Istanbul. People watching, taking in the sounds of the Islamic culture from the streets behind us, mixed with the Western music. We watched the faces of other tourists doing exactly the same as us. We ate up and headed back to the hotel to call it a night as we knew the next day was going to be busy. morning everyone we have woken up in this beautiful hotel in the center of old town Istanbul we're about to go down for breakfast in this hotel they supply us breakfast so we're gonna head down now and see what a vegan breakfast is all about in Turkey I just got a text message off them as well this keep they send us they've been sending me lots of whatsapp and this morning's WhatsApp is, Good morning, dear Liam. I hope you have a good time. The temperature in Istanbul today is the average of 30 degrees. Have a nice day. Ooh. Sounds good, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's really nice of them. Oh, no. Very friendly. Yeah. Can't beat a Turkish staircase. Yeah. Look at it. Don't have too many beers and fall down. Oh, no. uh, all of these staircases are grand and beautiful, but if you have too many beers and slip down, it'll be the last thing you've ever done. <laughs> yeah. Morning. morning. Oh, uh, we are vegan? We are vegan. That was a big plate of meat and cheese, wasn't it? <laughs> we did tell them when we come to places like this, we don't expect we're going to get anything vegan. <laughs> so funny, isn't it? <laughs> so it's basic. What, one thing that I was really, really worried about was that we'd just be in loads and loads of bread. Or, um, but I've got a feeling this <laughs> this dripping turkey is going to be a lot of bread. Our breakfast this morning was fruit, bread, jam, including rose jam, and pancakes with tea and coffee. It was okay, but they did seem surprised that a couple of vegans came in, even though Liam pre-arranged breakfast. We later found out that it was a miscommunication as our breakfast the following morning was one of the best we have ever had in a hotel, consisting of an avocado toasty, potato rosti, stuffed flatbread, juice, and tea and coffee. We ate our breakfast and headed out. <laughs> Okay, let's go and see some Istanbul. <laughs> Hi guys, just want to take a quick minute to talk about hydration and something that a product that we've been trying out for the last three months to review and give you our honest feedback about. It's called Air Up and they come in these bottles. In fact, there's more bottles now and it's a patented technology to help you drink more water. Well, that's the main reason why we like it anyway. The technology, if you haven't seen any of our previous videos on it, it's just a standard water bottle with a straw that goes down it. You suck the uh, water using air and suction 
Through the straw, it then passes through one of these pods that's on top of the bottle. The air passes through the pod and goes up through the straw and through the magic of smell, it actually feels like, or act, the sensation you get is you're actually tasting that flavor in the water. But the reality is you're just drinking plain water. So it's like a bit of a trickery and illusion. It tricks your mind into thinking that you're drinking something a lot different to what you're drinking. Janine, what's your favorite flavor so far? My favorite is the watermelon. Watermelon, which is what we've actually, we're away at the moment, um, which is what we've actually brought away with us. So we've got our watermelon pods here in case we run out, but they do last for five litres per bottle. What's been your second favourite flavour, Janine? I'm really excited to try the cucumber, which I haven't tried yet. Yeah, we basically, we got a, uh, an extra pouch sent to us and we wanted to try out the cucumber one because we drink a lot of cucumber water in the past and we like the flavour of it. So yeah, we brought that free. We're going to show you how you put the pods on because it's dead easy. And yeah, each of the bags of pods, each pod lasts for five litres of water. Water, so they last quite a while. Janine, what's been the best thing about drinking Air Up so far for you? 100% I'm drinking more water. That's the ultimate best thing for me. I'm drinking so much more water and it's brilliant. So bingo, that is the, the main reason. Janine's been enjoying it a lot more than I have. I enjoy it, but I drink plain water anyway. I'm okay with that. However, I brought mine away for me as well. For me, I get excited about drinking them because we get new flavors, it's something interesting, and it saves you from drinking all the sugars that you get in orange juice and cordials and stuff like that. So it gives the illusion of you that you're drinking those drinks, but it's enough to make it exciting. And that's what I really like about it. And Janine's health has definitely, and complexion and all the rest of it, has definitely improved since we started drinking these. We're at the end of the three months now, we've just got on the steel bottle, which basically keeps water colder for longer. So it's a bit of a game changer. Unfortunately, we didn't get it in enough time to bring it out here with us. Had we would have done, it would have been brilliant. These are really, really good and they last for ages. So all of the pods are recyclable and this is reusable. And yeah, so far we are really, really enjoying it. Okay, so I'm about to try the cucumber flavor. Oh, wow. That's actually, that's really good. That is like, because cucumber has such a subtle flavor, um, if you were to put it in water and flavour the water with cucumber, it would actually taste like this. It's not an intense sort of almost like Coca-Cola flavour. It, it is like you've actually got cucumber in it. That's really good. So my favourite flavour so far has been strawberry and lemongrass. Let's give the cucumber a go. Mmm. Janine's spot on. Actually tastes like there's cucumber in there. That's a good one to get if you want to try one out, if you like cucumber water like we do. There's tons of flavors uh, online, so go and get, have a look and a browse and see if there's any you like. It's definitely worth a try, especially if you have trouble drinking water or you're not excited by water. And we'll leave a link with 10% off any order on the Air Up website in our description using the code those happy days. Now back to the video. This morning we have woken up on a very hot day in summer in Istanbul, which we thought was the capital city of Turkey, but apparently it's not, it's just the biggest. Istanbul is unique as half of the city is in the continent of Europe and the other half in Asia, split by an area called the Bosphorus Strait, which we believe is not far from our hotel. Istanbul is one of the most populated cities in the world and definitely the most populated in Europe, with 99% of its inhabitants being Muslim and is steeped in ancient history dating back 2,500 years. To say we are excited is an understatement. Good morning. So this is Istanbul. The purpose of today for Janine and I is to try and get a lay of the land. We do not know Turkey in the slightest. We don't know the culture, we don't know the food, we don't know any of it. So before we move on for the rest of our adventures around Turkey, we are just going to get a lay of the land, acclimatise as it were. And then we're going to stop probably for a coffee in a second and fill you in on the plans for the whole of this trip. Uh, and Phil Janine in as well because she doesn't really know yet um, but it's going to be a good one and already the smells, the sounds it's absolutely incredible yeah this place is absolutely nuts um, what's Sorry. that? <laughs> <laughs> what's the question? I give you information oh no thank you yeah this place is crazy everyone's trying to get you into their shops um, to buy whatever it is they're selling 
really nice stuff actually. Um, it's so in your face and there is lots and lots of sounds going on from people shouting, mopeds beeping, cars driving past really quickly. Um, and oh my god. And um, yeah, it's, it's just, it's really good. I, love, I absolutely love it. Um, the smells as well, there's perfume and you've got the scents of oranges because oranges are really popular out here um, and abundant as well. So yeah, walking along, just trying to not fall over. <laughs> we also need some supplies as well, soya milk and sunscreen. We didn't bring sunscreen because we're only carrying our one bag of hand luggage and this huge photography bag. So we didn't manage to pack everything. So we had, thought we'd have to get some out of here. Um, so sunscreen, soya milk. This is our first Turkish supermarket. Let's go and see what this is like. I have a feeling we're going to be eating a fair few million of these whilst we're in Turkey. They're like roasted chickpeas and they go soft, really, really soft and floury inside when they've done this way. And we have them in England as well, but they're coated in chocolate in England and they're even better. So if we can find some that are coated in dark chocolate, that'd be amazing. But for now, these. Mmm. I'm finding everything here is just beautiful. So we've just ordered two lattes and they've come out with some gorgeous little flowers. They seem to decorate everything in flowers. I'm talking literally everything. So even the tea bag cases are just covered in flowers. Everything is so pretty. It's really overwhelming having so much beauty on every single corner that you turn. It's yeah, it's really difficult not to just be amazed by absolutely everything. I'm trying to home it in, but it's hard. <laughs> Even this latte, I'm overwhelmed by. <laughs> we finished up our tea and chocolate cake with two sleeping cats under our table and discussed our plans for this trip. Okay, so the plans are, Janine, is that we're going to Cappadocia. Cappadocia is, on, I've been on Janine's bucket list, but it's on the top 10 things to do before you die. I've seen it on quite a lot of different things. For a big, for a specific reason, they've got quite a show there at sunrise in the morning. But also, it's not just that, it's in the desert. Um, it's a very sort of cave orientated sort of uh, place. It's very, very ancient. Um, it's just awesome. It's very hard to explain, right? Yeah. Without, without showing you a picture or we're gonna go there tomorrow. Um, so we are in Istanbul now. We're acclimatizing in Istanbul, and then tomorrow we are flying to Cappadocia. But um, for now, we are gonna go and see uh, one of the most famous buildings in the world. One of, one of the most famous one buildings them, in the world. Yeah. Um, and it's just literally just down the road here. Um, so that's where we're going first. So two coffees and a cake cost us nine pounds, um, which we think is a little bit pricey, but it was vegan. Uh, we had some uh, almond milk and they also offered oat milk and all the other milks and stuff. So it's quite a specialist. And we had vegan cake as well. So it must be slightly ramped up because it's touristy and specialist. This is Cappadocia. We're talking about Cappadocia. This is where we're going to tomorrow. Hopefully we get to experience something like this. We headed off to wander the streets and go to our first proper site, cooling down using the street tap on the way. It's absolutely boiling here at this time of day. We noticed most locals chilling in roadside cafes hiding from the sun. Our first stop of the day was the Hagia Sophia. We jumped on the end of the queue to get in and waited in line for about 30 minutes. This is the queue to get in the Hagia Sophia and it's actually really long. I'm hoping that it will take us five minutes and be really quick, but it looks like it's gonna take a lot longer. It's very, very popular. Well, we've, we've been queuing for the last 45 minutes for the Aya Sophia, and this kind, what's your name? I know. Isabel has just told us that it's actually, as we're about to enter, it's not the Aya Sophia, it's a museum. But you've gotta come and see it whilst you're here. It looks beautiful inside, so we're gonna go and see it anyway. So we're off to a museum. The Aya Sophia will come later. So it's about nine pounds to enter, so it's actually all right. Um, and we'll find out what it is when we get the time <laughs> So off we went into this museum that we hadn't planned to see. Our first impressions were positive. Wow, this is just beautiful. It's like a really, really massive... I, I can't even explain it. What? It's like some big underground sort of temple sort of thing. 
that's just lit with these most incredible lights and it's just gone pitch black. It's like a light show. It's a light show in a temple. It's just incredible. We entered into the Great Basilica Cistern, which is an ancient underground reservoir under the city of Istanbul, dating back to the 6th century, which to us looked like a huge underground Gothic cathedral. We felt lucky that we had no idea at all what to expect inside this incredible, unique landmark, as we thought we were queuing for something else. But what we experienced over the next 60 minutes was something we will never forget for the rest of our lives. Lights flashed, then darkness took hold, then different colour lights flashed, followed by more darkness. It did this randomly for the whole time we were there, creating intensity and drama like we hadn't experienced before. At one point, the darkness fell again and loud orchestral music filled the room. Then before our eyes, lasers descended from the ceiling and cascaded across the 336 columns, followed by a stunning but very dark animation of the story of Medusa. Not sure what, what what just happened, but it was absolutely incredible. <laughs> just absolutely stunning. The whole thing went dark into a huge laser light show um, with a screen telling the story of like um, oh, I don't know what it was, the Medusa and stuff. It was incredible. It was absolutely out of this world. Back to the heat. <laughs> oh my god, and the light. And the light. Oh my god. Wow. Basilica Cistern Museum was incredible. You have to go and see it. I'm so glad that we wouldn't have got, we might not have gone to that anyway, Maybe not. had we not accidentally got in the queue for it. When we were in the queue, we spoke to a lady who told us that the Aya Sophia is really amazing to see at night. Uh, we are in the daytime now, we were on our way there. So we've decided to go back at sunset. So we get like the best of both worlds. So, um, so hopefully we see both. So we're gonna go back at sunset. So now I think we're gonna go probably for a bit of a wonder and see what else we can find in this amazing city. We headed off to explore and couldn't turn down some hot roasted chestnuts on this scorching day. We were both feeling tired from all the walking in the city and the heat was wearing us down. We went to the next cafe we saw which happened to be a sweet shop. We sat and drank bubble tea in the shade to catch a break for a bit. Get you whatever you want, I'll settle for nothing. As long as we can get the fire. Wow, it gets hotter as it go, the day goes on here. Um, but thankfully, the sun is going down soon. Well, not thankfully, we're having a great time, but it's bloody hot. Um, we're both hungry. We realise as we're picking around, looking at Turkish delight places, that we're actually both quite hungry. So. We're heading to a place where we think we might get some plant-based food. We headed off around these beautiful Turkish streets to find a restaurant looking at the shops on the way. So as we're walking along, we've seen this around the whole of the city and it's basically where you go in and you get your photo taken um, and you, you get dressed up as like the sultan, so like royalty. And, uh, and it's just really strange. I'm not doing it. I, I refuse to do it. Go on, Janine. You know you want to get dressed up as a sultan. <laughs> Refusing to do fancy dress in this heat, we headed to a restaurant which was recommended to us as the owners understood veganism and hopefully could adapt some of the dishes for us. Okay, so what's great about this place is we're getting a much better idea about what's plant-based and what's not on a normal Turkish menu. And we're starting to understand it. So we're going to order some food that uh, is on the normal Turkish menu that has been that is vegan. Because we like to keep it authentic and as local as possible. Um, and yeah, there's some falafel in there as well, which is really good. Hummus, obviously, gonna be ordering that. So yeah, should we just order away? Yeah. Okay, go on. <laughs> so these guys, they're everywhere, all over the city, and they come in and sing to you whilst you're eating. They're actually quite good. I don't think we've got any change though, on us. Oh, that's a shame, isn't it? <laughs> I hope they don't come over here. Thank you very much. Oh, they've gone. Hello? Liam? <laughs> Coming back. <laughs> you, give, you give them the money. Excuse me, what's your name? Liam. Liam! Come 
We finished listening to the traditional Turkish music and finally managed to try the local apple tea which was delicious before our order arrived. Okay, so what we've got is falafel, grapevine leaves, hummus, the room is special and some delicious homemade flatbreads. The food was exceptional, vibrant, colourful, full of the flavour of all those Turkish spices. The falafels were delicious and the bread is to die for, especially dipped in the fresh homemade hummus. This is the hummus special, no, room is special, as in roomy, I think. Mmm, mmm, wow, holy hell, that is delicious. We continued hiding from the sun and eating our feast of all our favourite foods before heading off feeling stuffed. Okay, so that was an absolutely incredible meal. That was the Roomist Cafe and I would highly recommend it. The hummus there, oh my God, that was so good. Yeah, the hummus and falafel. I've not had falafel that good for a very long mm. time. Let, let it be known that it's also a carpet shop <laughs> and that it's very, very, very good. Um, I had to take my underwear off in there because it was so damn hot. Um, so um, <laughs> I'm sort of worried as well if we go to the Hagia Sophia that they're gonna make me wear long trousers and I don't want to change from shorts to long trousers in public because it won't be pretty. <laughs> So we've got to get to the hotel quickly and change. Is that right? Yep, let's, let's go. go. To save a disaster at the Aya Sophia with Liam's pants, we headed back to our hotel so Liam could get changed. We headed through a bazaar where we saw a glimpse of some traditional Turkish dancing, which looked very interesting. Then Liam quickly got changed and we made our way out to the incredible Aya Sophia. Okay, so we're finally, finally going to the Aya Sophia and we're gonna head there now i'm not entirely sure what the dress code is i know we have to cover up the knees but i'm not sure i've got a cardigan to cover my shoulders i'm not sure if i have to cover my head so we're just gonna head down there and see what the crack is when we're there so we've just got here just about to go in literally on the other side of these barriers and we're going in and the sound is the prayers happening and you can't go in there when prayers happen obviously so i think we've just missed it but I've just seen some people running in no no I don't think you can oh they're looking it through here we'll go through here oh they're running to prayer they're actually running to prayer so um so yeah we've just missed it but it's nice to sit outside anyway and wait for them to finish maybe we'll have a look after if we can so they're doing their prayers in correspondence with the blue moth which is right behind me over there so they're so this one's doing his prayer thing and then that one is as well both are like simultaneously and uh yeah it's quite incredible what's going on Liam? i don't know whether i don't know whether we're allowed in whether this is just people going in to pray or not or whether we can go in but lots of people start rushing in i don't think they're all here to pray i'm not, I'm not 100 sure we'll find out anyway we made it through security to the other side where hopefully we can enter this huge building. Okay, so we're in. That was quite nerve wracking actually. It's like going through customs. <laughs> um, and it's really, I'm trying to keep my voice down because it's really peaceful in here. We're heading up to the scarf sale bit. I'm not sure if I need a scarf. I think you need a headscarf, yeah. Do I definitely? Not all the women are wearing headscarves. Uh, quite a lot of them aren't. I'd rather not have one. I don't think I need one. Yeah. Don't, need, don't need one, okay. We've just been sent back. I need a headscarf, so headscarf it is. Okay. Thank you. Do I do that at the front? <laughs> <laughs> so silly. Okay, just tie it over your head. <laughs> just tie it over your head. I'll do. I think we're gonna take it down a bit at the back. Yeah. I think we're gonna take it down a bit. If we do that. There you go, it's because your head's sticking up. There you go. I feel like a little milkmaid. L little, um. <laughs> <laughs> God's sake. Oh, so no, me, uh... Own it, Janine, own it. <laughs> right, I'm going to own this headscarf there now. You go. you've, gone from, you've gone from 40 to the age of 39 <laughs> to the age of bloody 80. 
yeah. <laughs> this birthday is not doing me proud. <laughs> Looking like a milkmaid or not, we walked into our first ever experience of the mighty Hagia Sophia. This beautiful building in its early beginnings back in the 5th and 6th century was a Christian cathedral and not only was it then the largest interior space in the world, but it was the first building ever to have a fully pendentive dome. Liam and I entered the large mosque, taking off our shoes first, and could not help but feel somewhat moved by how enormous the inside space felt. It was like a giant room filled with peaceful vibrations, and we felt very welcomed by everyone in there. It was truly one of those moments you remember forever. So it's a bit strange being allowed to film and walk around as sort of non-Muslim people in a mosque during prayer time. But it's very, very peaceful and very, very friendly in here. You've got to be quiet. And it's quiet tones is what I'm guessing because it's not very loud. It's very, very peaceful. In fact, it's one of the most peaceful places I think I've ever been. It's quite warm in here and the, but the carpet's quite nice under your bare feet as you're walking through. And then there's all of these chandeliers that are hanging from the ceiling that look like something from um, Hogwarts. With the, they look like they're literally floating when you're underneath them. And then if you look up, you've just got the most impressive dome. And that was built you know, over 1500 years ago, which is, I think that's what makes it the most interesting thing is that how did they do this? I don't know if it's a wonder of the world or not, but it's, and it's still, it's not even like ruins. It's just all in such immaculate condition. Wow, we weren't expecting that. That is a working mosque still, and never have we felt more in welcome and invited into a place. Um, just what an amazing experience! What an amazing day to round. Sorry, what an amazing way to round off the day. Just, just. I know we keep saying it, but just absolutely incredible. Was not ready for that, and it blew me away. And you know what? Something else that I've noticed as well. Turkish people, man, are they friendly? They're so friendly. Not like put it on for tourism friendly. You can recognize the difference between the two. Just being your general person. They're just super, super friendly. You can tell it's well within the culture. Um, even in a big chaotic city like this, they are so friendly. They've got the time to speak to you, not just sell you stuff. We're not just talking about business people. They do do that as well, but they're just an everyday person. Not met one unkind person so far, and that says a lot. After a very busy day in Istanbul, it was getting late. We headed back to our hotel to chill for the evening and enjoy our last night relaxing before we move on to our next location. So one thing we haven't done yet is we haven't got up to the rooftop. So we've got this bottle of wine that the reception kindly gave us in this hotel. And uh, we're gonna go up to the rooftop, see what that's all about, have a glass of wine, and hopefully have a really lovely last evening in Istanbul before we have to leave tomorrow. And we've got that Turkish delight as well that we bought. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna have a real treat now. All right, so the lift goes up so far that we walk the rest, okay. no worries. Okay. Rooftops are fantastic places to get new perspectives on the world and as we drank the free wine gifted to us by the hotel and ate the delicious Turkish delight we had picked up earlier today, we looked at Istanbul with different eyes than what we had when we arrived. There is a charm in every inch of the landscape in front of us and a story is being told through it that dates back to the beginning of human civilization. and tonight we got to sit back and listen to it on that rooftop of the miniature hotel in Istanbul. Thank you for taking the time to watch our adventures in Turkey. We hope you will subscribe and join us next time when we head to Cappadocia and tick off something that's been on my bucket list for a very long time. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun, side by side our fears are done.